Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Banishers Part 29. Um, we're still at Fort Jericho. Oh, apparently we have to rest at the shelter, I've just noticed. So, yeah, just picking up exactly from where we left off after we brought back the other leader, I guess, technically, of this place, who's in um, different viewpoints to the other leader. So, obviously, it's going to work out to be picking between the two um, for what's best for the fort. So, let's rest up and see what happens. Vanishes. May I have a word? Helen, something wrong? Apologies for disturbing your rest. I'm afraid it can't wait. What did you think of the captain? I saw a different man from the captain we first met. His brains are cracked. I saw a liability. On that, we agree. But his sullens are an act behind which he may hide his errors. An act? I don't believe so. He's haunted, perhaps literally. It matters not. What matters is the price the people here pay for his mistakes. You are banishers. The dead, you'll have noticed, hammer at the gates. I would like you to go into the mines and find out what enrages them so. I would like you to do what the captain will not. And while we deal with the hordes of angry specters, what shall you be doing? When the mines are purged, I'll oust Pennington. How goes it with Sebastian? I'm not sure. I had never let go of my grief. I was bereft, empty. His absence gave me substance. I clung to it, useless really. My husband died in the dark with nothing but my handkerchief to soothe his last moments. And now, he's back. If each worthwhile thing in life is to be lived, and then when it is gone, to be grieved, then what now? I have to believe our love is enough. Love is all. Grief can hang. <laughs> and yet I cannot hold him. I cannot feel his warmth. He is there, but he is not there. That hurts. All things are fleeting. Gaze upon the ghost you love and you can't deny it. Bitter though the thought may be. Yes, tis a blessing and a curse. Yet against all reason, we persist. Let us make the most of time remaining. Is it your belief that Pennington's quarantine lies at the heart of the problem here? But this is why the dead rage so. What else? He walled them in. Miners, nurses, soldiers, the healthy or the sick, he buried them all. And then he lied about it. I'll brook his callous cowardice no more. Much goes on around here, and you seem to know about all of it. I try, and I could do something about it if the captain was out of the way. What brought you to New Eden? I came with Sebastian, willingly, mind you. My father was a soldier. I knew there'd be travel. Sebastian courted me for three years. I swore when we married I'd follow him to the end of the earth. And here we are. How's morale about the fort? The fort has known better days. Not many, mind. It's always been miserable. Folk deserve better. They fought so hard and lost so much. The captain must show them a future. Where do we go? There is a second tunnel into the mines. The entryway was walled shut during the quarantine. Getting there will not be easy, but the barricade should fall without too much difficulty. After that, who knows? Underground again. Wonderful. If it soothes you, I too am taking a significant risk. 
The captain has a penchant for locking people up and leaving them to rot. Some years ago in New Eden Town, the captain locked up an innocent woman. A fate I wish to avoid. Pennington the Jaina. Do you speak of Deborah? What did he do? I was away from New Eden Town at the time. Rumors said she was a witch, I later heard. And so too did the captain. The court agreed. Who knows what urges drove the captain then? He is a secretive man, and always has been. Hmm. We should go. Then it's agreed. When you're ready, you'll investigate the mines. Take the hoist to the waterfall, near the outpost you first found me. From there, it is not far to the tunnel. Keep your wits and all your luck about you. Right. Well. Oh. Shitloads of stuff to do here. Let's investigate, my friends. An innocent woman jailed. I mean, as wolf belts go, it's pretty. But it's after more than enough of them. Captain doesn't strike me as a Boston and not short of wolf belts. Helen is right. What do I do with the this? The truth lies down You're there merchant. somewhere. Sell it. I suspect Deborah is at it again. Spanish, but that is not the problem. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome to Ingersoll's general store. I'm Bathsheba Ingersoll, the owner. What can I get you? A comb, perhaps? How rude. A comb. Very funny. Red McCray, I'm pleased to meet you. I met your friend, Miss Duarte, briefly in New Eden Town. I'm so sorry for your loss. She seemed a vibrant and resolute young woman. And she seemed eager to leave town as quickly as possible. Tell me about your store. Tell me about you. The original Ingersoll's in Boston was grand and fine, but it burned in the North Square fire of 91. We moved to New Eden with Nathaniel. But before Natty could return home, my husband died. Then came the curse. And now here we are. Welcome to Ingersoll's of Fort Jericho. You never wanted to do anything else. My husband was prosperous and affluent. I was young and clever. We made an excellent match. He taught me everything I know. The store is my business. My legacy. My story. It is who I am. I don't like running a store. I love it. Love this factory. The shopkeeper must hear everything that goes on. Tell me something interesting. Just between us. You assume me to be a gossip monger. What do you wish to know? What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He lets me trade. I like the man. He says Ingersoll's store is good for the fort. I very much agree. What can you tell me about Helen Priest? I like her. Though she's impetuous. Terse, even. She fancies herself a leader when she should know her place, and that place is below the captain. Thinking about it? No. I don't think I do like her. Ooh, okay. More generally, how fares Fort Jericho? Well, it's cold. Folk are hungry more often than not. I've little to tell you you won't hear from someone else. But Ingersoll's is open, so all is well with me. Let's see what she's got. Shall we trade? I need iron. I rather think we should, sir. What interests you? Ooh, what have you got? Damage up by red and up to 20% the lower the spirit gauge. Hmm. That's pretty good. She's got a lot of good stuff. Iron, copper, magnemite, pyrite, silver, log iron. No, just iron. Iron, there we go. Let's 
that's what we needed. I must take my leave. Thank you for your visit. Do come again. No Ferdinando here. Nope. Anyone in here? No. Is this geezer? Good day, sir. Nathaniel Sather, at your service. What can I do for you? That Mr. Sather remains to be seen. Red McCraith, by the way, the banisher. You seem a chatty fella. We see precious few new faces around here. <laughs> You'll forgive me if I use you for fresh conversation. Tell me about yourself. Share your business. Tell me what's important to you. I'm from Boston. I love it very much. So much more lively. A fine mix of conviviality and anonymity. I miss that life. The music. The colour and the splendour. The dance of commerce. The flower sellers forget-me-nots. Oh, the forget-me-nots. I very much wish to go home. What are you doing here, then? I'm the shop boy. When the store moves, I move with it. Old man Ingersoll opened up a general store in Boston back in 78. Then he married Bathsheba. I came with them to New Eden, intending to quickly return. But Mr. Ingersoll died. I extended my stay. It took me on when I was just a boy. I have no family. All I have is my Thomas, my closest friend. You have, as my granny would say, the power to talk the back legs off a two-footed donkey. <laughs> but I bet you listen, too. What do you hear here about? A little of interest. Pennington has signed John Rumble to the train band, which means nothing at all to me. I believe John was down the flooded mine. That can't have been fun. Maybe the militia will be good for him. Huh? Never know who'll take to soldiering. You say that, and I defer to your experience, but I'm sure it's not for me. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? The captain? I've not a single bad word to say about that dismally antiquated, superannuated old man. His depth of experience is inspiring. Although I shudder to think what those experiences have done to him. But we should respect our elders. We should listen to their point of view. And then ignore it as we look to the future. What do you think of Helen Priest, then? I'd put her in charge if I could. She's bright, trustworthy, thinks for herself. She's not married to all doctrine. People here are desperate. They're sick. They need courage. And Helen Priest fears nothing. More generally, how fair is Fort Jericho? It's cold. Our clothes are inelegant, the walls are drab. There's no music, no conviviality. There's no gaiety. Boston isn't much of a city, but I miss it. I wonder what I could make of this place were I allowed. You can paint a turnip red, but it still won't be an apple. <laughs> True. But stack enough red-painted turnips about the place, and even the dowry Scotsman shall surely crack a smile. <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> I must go. Thank you for your time. Take care, and mention it not. Hmm. find Fanny or Fenny or whatever the hell his name was store who are you good day to you miss miss I'm the hunter Flora Abbott and I never miss you it is rare but I have been known to miss Red McCraith banisher I heard about you when you first arrived is your friend not with you she died She's with me in spirit. Sad to hear it. 
I'm nothing clever than that to say. If you need anything, well, I probably can't help. So you hunt for the fort? Are you part of the train ban? I serve, in my way. Before the curse, I traded with the people of New Eden. Meat and fur bartered for whatever they had that I needed. How did you end up in New Eden? You won't mind me saying that you're not like most people here. And yet, I am a New Englander. Born on a farm not far from Boston, but always preferred the wild. So I came to New Eden. In time, I came to love it. It's cursed, and I'm still here, aren't I? What do you know? Tell me about your day-to-day. -day. If I did, would you listen? Talk to me of Captain Pennington. I've worked for worse. I'm able and I give him no trouble. In return, he makes sure I get none. He respects me. That makes him an excellent judge of character. Don't you think? What can you tell me about Helen Priest? Not my favorite person, if I'm honest, but in the fight against the dead, she's an asset. How are you yourself? I do my work and do it well, the few notice. I'll take my leave of you, Flora. I'll not stop you. I'm not wondering how this town's really giving me much like reason to dislike Pennington or any of that kind of stuff. No, very much eye for an eye. You're new. From where have you sprung? Name's Red McRae. A banisher. Come from across the deep blue sea. You look a landlubber to me. You should feel right at home. John Rumble. Are you a married man, John? Aye. To Abigail. I count myself lucky. Are you married yourself, Mr. Marriage was not for us. But I suppose you could have called us man and wife. No, you could not. Marriage is a union <laughs> conceived by men. Men are fallible. Do I detect a hint of regret? Regret? Oh, I have no regrets. She's a fine woman, my wife. Finer than likes of me deserves. I don't say a word against her. Not a word, sir. What's the word round here? Look around you. We're barely hanging on. You'll have to be Miller to enjoy the situation. The merchant? Aye, the freedman. He's the only one who'll leave Fort Jericho with more than he came with. Some people have all the luck. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? What about him? I don't know. Is he a good commander? Do you like him? Does he have secrets, that kind of thing? If, say, I thought him a blockhead, then I'd not say so. If, say, it was my wife's stupid idea for me to join the train band, I'd not say that neither. Can you tell me anything about Helen Priest? A bold woman, clever too. I'd be glad to take her orders. I'm interested in Sebastian Priest. Do you know him? I did not, but I know the lieutenant's name. We all do. He died a hero. Call comfort to Helen, no doubt. May you prosper in good health, John. He that does good is of God. How often? Please excuse my husband. He really is as unpleasant as he sounds. <laughs> and who are you, then? At Red McCraith, ma'am. I'm a banisher. Are you indeed? Pleased to meet you, Mr. Banisher. I'm Abigail Rumble. Thanks to you, me and my husband should soon be able to go back to our mountains. You and your husband prefer an isolated life outside the fort. I have a roof above my head. My belly is rarely empty. And I live by my beliefs. We suffered for many years. By comparison, this is bliss. 
Do you not find it dangerous out here? Just the two of you alone. I thank you for your concern, but we live how we live, and it makes us quite contented. Your husband won't mind us talking. No. Why would he? We are faithful and trustworthy. As, I'm sure, are you. She doubts your intentions. No need to worry about me, ma'am. I'm spoken for. Good. We understand one another. My husband and I are very close. Very close indeed. Then you have my admiration. Sustaining such closeness takes much tolerance and hard work. You don't know how good you've got it. Anything talk-worthy around these parts? Ferdinando Miller has been the talk of the town lately. He has had much good fortune and many resent him for it. I like the lad. He's polite, helpful, listens to his customers. He deserves no backbiting. What's your thoughts on Pennington? A good leader? He gave John a job. That was good. We hadn't worked since we left the Bly place. He saw John's promise and gave him his chance. I, I'd say he's a good leader. Helen Priest seems to get the work done. The captain trusts her with his life. So do I. John adores her. When the fort was attacked, she proved us right. I like having a strong woman in charge. I'll let you get back to your day, madam. If you need anything, feel free to ask. Yeah, a lot of conversation in this place. How often, Abigail, must we have this fight? How often must we argue? We shall argue until you hear me. I hear you. I hear a hoggish harrow, a narrow neck, a selfish shrew. That's the captain's office, isn't it? Yeah. So where... That's my camp. Is this trade dude then? Not there. Oh. You've saved our sorry asses, sir. Of that, there is no doubt. You've earned us a rare bit of rest, and that comes most welcome. You're right, soldier. You look drop dead weary. The dead don't sleep, do they? Me being asleep won't stop them coming. Can no one take your shift? We're short handed as it is. Besides, I can rest and keep watch at the same time. Old soldier trick. Oh, bullshit aside, what's going on? Oh, what do you care? I have my problems and you have yours, so let me handle myself. I ain't important, and I don't deserve no help. Wasted time helping me anyway. You heard the man. He wants no help. I see no reason to force it on him. For now, at least. How are folk doing? Fighting fit? Well, they're farmers, most of them. Shopkeepers. House servants, hunters. We've one old soldier, but he's sick. Them who stand, stand dead on their feet. Fighting fit, my arse. But we hold against the hordes of the dead. For now, leastways. The fight's not fair, does it? Well, that's wrong. But we're doing our best to put it right. Wherefore, the paradise of New Eden, me. Eh? What a hole we've made of it. Mind you, if we stop digging, we die. Had any good scuttle lately? I'd spill it if I have it, but be quick. I'm busy. We've known an officer or three, you and me. So, tell me about the captain. 
In nigh on 20 years' service, I've not met a commander more efficient. Nor one so relentless. Ever a pain in the ass, I. Well, good one. But that was then, and this is now. He's not the man he was. Still a pain in the arse, mine. What think you now of Helen Priest? Ah, she's like her husband. Only yet better. Command is in her blood. She reminds me of my old mum. The Queen of Topsfield Common, we used to call her. Born to give orders, she was. And you dare not disobey. Did you know Sebastian Priest? I surely did. Good man. Hell of a soldier. Had kingly ideals, but did not strut like a crow in the gutter. Hero is an ill-used tag. Oft misassigned. But Lieutenant Priest was a hero, and a proper one at that. As you were, soldier. Alright, sorry about the strange edit there, guys. Got interrupted. Midway through. Oh, Back that's already. her. Alt. I'm not. Mate. I've talked to that guy already. The mayor, the way. Piss off. All right. I'd like to help him. Old soldier and all. All right. All right. We've Let's got a haunting finally. Billet. Right. Andrew's things. Where are you? That's for Ethel. Come out of current sick. I do nothing for them. Screamish as I am. They spend the night nurse's side, carrying spew in buckets. Well, that's nice stuff. Sickness of a soldier. Cheeky poem. Water poems. They ruined me. No, I'll keep looking. Now the Bible? Yep. Check another Bible off the list. In honor of the bravery of Andrew White, King Philip's War. Hmm, reward given to a brave soldier. I believe we found Andrew's things. Andrew White, my love, I'm sending this letter so you'll not worry about the situation. You were promoted to the role of common strut? Common strut? I don't know. Skills. This is our best lead yet. I wonder if there's an infirmary. After that, we might look for his train band record. Investigate the infirmary, find Andrew's record in the armory. So I ran behind that house. Doesn't look like it. So where's the infirmary? This is a roundabout way to get to the infirmary. Captain Pegg's report on Floor Abbott. Sebastian Priest promoted and shall receive lieutenant. The ceremony was simple and joyful. Priest's wife. Cotton Peabody may like him. Okay. Ooh. Pick that up. Captain's report Helen Priest. Okay. Who 
which we brought about last morning. I took 12 mana right out of Portsmouth in search of attachment for the plus, uh, Plasmouth Militia. And three days later, half days. Okay. A metal trinket to mark a life of sacrifice. Oh, I bet he'd rather have his sleep bag. Can't change what's done. Time heals all. Or so I'm told. Any idea who this ghost might be? You may know a soldier by his trail of dead. Could be anyone. Alright. <coughs> Apologies for that. I think I just inhaled some dust. Another Bible. Objects falling. Awesome. <clears throat> so if you need to read those, just pause. I read them while I'm editing. Pretty empty armory. Looks like someone's been living in here. Now the Bible. Bible's everywhere. Storeroom. Locked. We can't get in there either. Okay, can't get in there yet then. Let's go find the infirmary. Now, Mr. Peabody, I shall drain the first boil. Ready? Same sudden question every sudden time. No, I'm not dumb well ready. Excellent. Then we'll begin. Be careful, God darn it! Careful! Gah! I know. I know. Okay. Are those your records? Yes. Perhaps someday they may help someone. For many years. Okay. Nightmares. Which is delirium. Affected by dementia. Thirteen years is a long time to live haunted. Enough, John. I'll not listen to another. The ghost is weak. Fragile. They're no strong enough to stick Rats around. Oh, and wait to live. The I'll talk to Andrew. Might perk him up a bit. Have respect. Respect. Helen Priest sets out into the wild in search of our salvation while the captain rots in his office. No, no, to respect. My apologies. I did not wish to hush you. I just prefer to focus on one patient at a time. 
Welcome to the infirmary. I'm Nurse Wings. Anne, if it sets you at ease. I'm a banisher. Name's McCraith, but you may call me Red. Red. A pleasure to see a friendly face, or any face at all. What can I do for you? So, how'd you end up here? What brought you to nursing? That, sir, it's a personal question. I'm a personable man. That's not the same thing. I was sick as a child. Very sick. Afterwards, I swore I'd serve others when they were sick. And here I am. What about you? I fell in love with a banisher. I'm the best. Spent the happiest years of my life with her. And where are they now? Antea died in the meeting house in New Eden Town. Ah, that was you. I should have known. I'm so very sorry for your loss, Red. So very sorry. Times being as they are, how come you only have the one patient? Mr. Peabody's illness is unsightly. Fort Jericho has a history of contagion. Folk worry. What does he have? Not my place to say. You'll have to ask him yourself. All right. I'll not press you. Did you not fear infection? If I did, I would not show it. What's the word around here? I don't see folk much. I stay here, keep to myself. No visitors? No other patients? Helen Prees comes when she can. Captain Pennington would sometimes visit Mr. Peabody, but I haven't seen him in a while now. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He fought King Philip and the Wampanoag. Led his company well, I'm told. It's not for me to like or dislike him, unpleasant though he may be. Tell me about Helen Priest. The bold lieutenant's widow. He's dead some years now, and she's not remarried. She's as much a soldier as her husband was. A fighter. Commanding, too. Even dead, you can see his influence in her bearing. I think I know how that feels. What about you? How do you feel? Oh, I'm alive and well. I'll not complain. I can be strong for those less fortunate. You're a good soul, Nurse Wings. I do my best, Mr. McCraith. I'm sure you do yours. Farewell, Nurse Wings. Farewell, and good health, sir. Right. <sighs> These look nasty. Poor man. Never a good sign. Oh, there are you, Queen Mary Stuart. Well, I've met Mary the Second, and she's a little prettier than I. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. <sighs> the banisher come to gloat at sick old Cotton Peabody. Well, piss off. There's a sudden stink of death in here, Scotsman, and it ain't from me. Where did you fight, soldier? None of your business, Scotsman. This comrade is mine. No one wants to talk to you. <laughs> you're no soldier. You're a brawler and a rebel. And if you fought at all, I'll wager you lost. I'm a proper soldier, me. Self-made, too. Left the family farm and signed up to fight them Indians. I learned the hard way in the blood and the snow. Fought under the captain himself, I did and followed him here and joined the train band. When did you get sick? What's it to you? I'm not so sick as I can't give some nosy Scotsman what for. <laughs> when I'm sick, I get surly too. What's the word around here? No one tattles to me stuck in here. Captain came by once, worried for Andrew White. Seems the old boy screams in his sleep. There's a lot of it about. 
White's a gate guard, right? What's his story? He sees ghosts in his sleep. He's dreaming. Real ghosts come when you're awake. Tell me about the captain. Speak freely, I'll not get back to him. Let you get back to him. The captain is the best of us, and I'm proud to serve him. Proud, too, to give him my guidance when he'd call. Not that he calls no more. Suppose he has too much on his plate. Time's precious for the likes of the captain, eh? You tell me about Helen Priest. I promise it won't get back to her. Lieutenant's wife. Stood second to the captain herself. Now she's in command. Quite the rise, no? How's life about the fort? What do you want to hear? It's cold. We're hungry. Welcome to paradise. As you were, Mr. Peabody. See about. Not like I can go anywhere anyways. Right. There's a lot of investigation in this town. Okay. Let's talk to Andrew. Get back to Andrew. Ooh. You should have had your breakfast, friend. Anyway, greetings. I'm Antea Duarte. This here is Red McWraith. We're banishers. Now, who are you and what do you want? Sorry, guys. Get that out of the way. Take a cheeky screenshot for the thumbnail. Are you the ghost haunting Andrew White? Is that a yes or a no? You chose to manifest. Why is that? Are you looking for help? Who are you? This isn't gonna be easy, is it? Mute ghosts take forever. This is pointless. We're hunting in the dark with no light and no spur. First, you have to find out what's keeping him from speaking. Andrew won't be much help. But if our friend here can't tell us what he wants, maybe he can show us. <sighs> okay, guys. Do you want the investigation you? continues. I will leave this here because I've unfortunately ran out of time. So this episode Clever. is mainly just going to be so exploration. Them. Not even exploration. We've been in the town the whole episode. Um, investigation. Meeting the people, seeing what the word is, starting this haunting. So I do apologize for that. It's not the most enthralling episode, but at least it saves me doing it down the track. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. I'll get these up soon. Have a good one.